Hello everyone. Welcome back to Analog Snippets. Inductor current is probably one of the most, if not the most important waveform in switching converters. When you design a switching converter and silicon comes back to the lab, probably the first thing you want to see is inductor current waveform. So in this video, we will take a closer look at this important waveform. As such, inductor current waveform in switching converters is one of the simplest kind of waveforms that you can imagine. In fact, in a functioning converters, it can come only in three varieties. It can either ramp up linearly, or it can linearly ramp down, or it can remain at zero. In fact, this third phase is only valid for DCM operation. The ramping up phase is also known as magnetizing phase. Because in this phase, inductor is storing energy. The ramping down phase is also known as demagnetizing phase. And in this phase, inductor delivers energy. In standard convention, the voltage across inductor is supposed to be positive during the ramping up phase, negative during ramping down phase, and zero across third phase. The maximum value of inductor current waveform is known as peak current. Minimum value is known as valley current. And the difference of the two is known as ripple current. Inductor ripple current is an important parameter in switching converter design. The middle point between the peak and valley is known as center of ramp or COR. In steady state, center of ramp is same during the ramping up phase and ramping down phase. Center of ramp is also the average value of inductor current waveform in CCM operation. The ramping up phase is known as T on. The ramping down phase is known as T off. And the zero current phase is known as T tri state. Sometimes tri-state is also known as T high Z. And this is because during this phase, both switches are off or in high Z state. Notice that inductor current waveform is a continuous or smooth waveform. There are no sudden jumps or discontinuities in it. And this is consistent with the property of inductor where we can't change the current suddenly. Now let's look at the three fundamental topologies and put this waveform in perspective. So here we have buck, boost and inverting buck boost topologies. Input is on the left and output is on the right. The switch which is on during magnetizing phase is S1 and S2 is on during demagnetizing phase. First thing to notice between these topologies is that one end of the inductor is permanently connected to the V out in case of buck, V in in case of boost and neither in case of IBB. And this fact will have some important implications as we will discuss later. Let's start with the equations of ramp up and ramp down slopes in all three converters. The fundamental equation here is LDI by DT. Here VL is voltage across inductor and IL is inductor current. The inductor current slope is simply DI by DT. So essentially it is voltage across inductor divided by the inductor value. During T on, the voltage across inductor in buck is simply V in minus V out. So rising inductor current slope is simply V in minus V out over L. For boost and IBB, the voltage across inductor during T on is simply V in. So the rising slope will be simply V in over L. Let's look at falling slope now. For buck and IBB, the voltage across inductor during falling slope is simply V out. So falling slope will be simply V out over L. And I'm putting a negative sign just because it is a falling slope. For boost, voltage across inductor during off time is V in minus V out. So we notice that for the buck and for the boost, inductor is directly connected between input and output for a part of the duration. For T on in buck and T off in boost. So there is a direct transfer of energy between battery and output for that duration. For IBB, this direct transfer of energy never happens. Once we get the slope equations, it's easy to calculate the ripple. It is simply slope multiplied by the time, as shown by this equation. And since we have two equations for slopes, we can have two equations for ripple as well. So ripple can be calculated either by multiplying m1 with t on or multiplying m2 by t off. And since we only have one ripple value in steady state, these two values must be equal. And here is the cool thing. 
In CCM operation, there are only two phases, the T on and T off. So we can use these ripple equations to derive the input output transfer function. Let's see how. We need to equalize the two values of ripple current and just replace the equations of M1 and M2. Here I am using the absolute value of M2 and hence I am ignoring the minus sign. The L cancels out and now we can rearrange the equations to find our transfer function. And T on plus T off in CCM is simply the switching period. And T on over T period is simply duty of the PWM waveform. And here we have it. Easy, right? I urge you guys to derive the similar equations for boost and IBB as well. Inductor current doesn't exist in isolation. It flows from input through switch into output. So naturally there is a relationship between inductor current and the current in all these other components. And this relationship may differ from one converter to other. So let's divert our attention to that aspect now. Let's consider buck converter first. As I mentioned before, one end of inductor in buck converter is always connected to the output. And since in steady state average capacitor current must be zero, because otherwise it's not steady state, the entire output current is supplied by inductor on the average. So in buck converter, average output current is equal to average inductor current in steady state. This also means that the output current in buck converter is smooth. That means there are no discontinuities. And it is good thing for the ripple. Coming to the input current, it only flows when switch S1 is on. That is during T on period. So we can calculate average input current by considering only that phase of inductor current. Here D is duty of PWM waveform. We can derive this equation in another way. In a perfect switching converter, input power should be equal to output power. Now we have just derived the input output transfer function of a buck converter. So we can replace VO by D into V in. And we also established that average output current is equal to average inductor current. So we can replace that as well. V in in both sides cancels out and we get the same equation again. In summary, in this waveform, this shaded portion is input current. Now notice that input current jumps from zero to some value at the start of T on. And at the end of T on, it jumps back again from some high value to zero. So there are large discontinuities in input current waveform. And that is a problem. These large discontinuities can cause a lot of noise at the input side. And for this reason, buck converters require a very good input filtering. At the same time, these large discontinuities can cause large di by dt ringing because of the parasitic inductance. Because of these large discontinuities, the input side forms a hot loop. We will discuss hot loop in more details in a future video, but remember the term. Now coming to the current in the switches, current in S1 is same as the input current which is inductor current during T on phase. Similarly, current in S2 is inductor current during T off. And these two currents are same for all topologies. Let's now move to boost topologies. Now here, one end of inductor is permanently connected to V in. And that means inductor current always flows through the battery. So we can say that average inductor current is same as average input current. And now there are no discontinuities in the input current. So boost converter injects much smaller noise at the input as compared to the buck converter. Coming to the output current, inductor is connected to output only during T off. That means average output current is equal to average inductor current during T off phase. And now it is the output current which has jumps and discontinuities. These discontinuities can cause large ripple at the output voltage. And that also makes the output side a hot loop. Coming to the switch current, the current in S1 is same as inductor current during T on phase and current through S2 is same as inductor current during T off phase. So that part is same as buck converter. We can do the similar analysis for IBB converters. Here one end of inductor is permanently connected to ground. And that means neither input nor output current is smooth. So IBB have hot loop on both side, on input side and on the output side. I will leave input and output current derivation as an exercise. 
I will end the video with a final note on inductor current. The straight line ramp is only true for an ideal inductor. A practical inductor has so called derating effect. And that means inductor value decreases as current into it increases. A spice simulation should consider this effect, but for the first hand analysis we can ignore it. At the same time there will be some voltage drop across the switches and inductor DC resistance. As a result, voltage drop across inductor will be somewhat smaller as compared to the equations that we have derived in this video. Again, simulation should consider it, but we can ignore it for our first hand analysis. I hope you found this video helpful. So post your comments below and thanks for watching.